I have gone through every corner and every centimetre of the Nürburgring Nordschleife track in Gran Turismo 7 and Forza Motorsport and it is so surprising how many differences there are and how important these differences can be. So the obvious question is here, has Forza Motorsport done a better job of representing the Nordschleife in its game? I've driven this track in real life and I've done hundreds of hours here in video games over the years. And this is going to be the ultimate guide of the Nordschleife across Gran Turismo 7 and Forza. So make sure you're strapped in and let's take a look. So we're going to start off here with some footage going down the home straight of the 24 hour uh, combined circuit. And there might be some things you can see that sort of feel different. Don't worry, I'm going to slow this down for you in case you miss them. Because already down the home straight of the GP circuit, there are some big differences. So first of all, I want to point out for you obviously some of the signage is going to be different depending on the time it was captured have a look on the right hand side here you can see that the uh, signage on the building is very similar but this is where we start to see some differences in forza which is the top one you can see that the grandstands are clearly populated so the one down at the bottom the mercedes-benz one and also the grandstand on the left hand side whereas in gran turismo the one on the left hand side doesn't look populated at all and neither does the one at the end now we're going to see this up close and personal now pit buildings on the right hand side quite similarly detailed i would say but look at the left hand side so sparsely populated in the grand Tour 7 and here what you might have noticed look at the pop in on this grandstand on the left can you see can you see can you see there we go level of detail pop in and that's not something we seem to be experiencing on forza and now we get a much clearer view of this massive grandstand here at the nurburgring gp circuit and there are so many more spectators in the Forza version. This is just a time trial in both games, so there's no reason why they couldn't populate in Gran Turismo. I don't know if it really gets fully populated, but in Forza definitely it just feels more alive. And you can see there's some different subtleties to the lighting as well. We're going to have a look at the trees and the foliage and all this other kind of stuff in the video as well. And like I said, some very surprising differences coming up, especially when we get onto the Nordsch life but here in the GP circuit there's going to be something that if makes you feel very different firstly again another example of an empty grandstand in Gran Turismo 7 whereas Forza has really populated it we're going to go through the left hander here keep an eye on the uh, curb curbing and uh, what's on the outside of the curves so that's also very different between Forza and Gran Turismo 7 that actually has a gameplay effect because if it's grass you can't really use it if it's geoblock as they call it you can now look at the flags down by the hairpin here. Completely different feeling when you see those flags just bare compared to when you see spectators dotted all over them. And that really contributes, I think, to a feeling of excitement. Like, you, you know, you don't want to outbreak yourself here, but you want to show off a bit. You want to overtake someone into the hairpin in Forza. But maybe in Gran Turismo 7, it feels a bit sterile. Definitely GT Sport was a very sterile game. And I'm starting to see some of that DNA in Gran Turismo 7 as well. Here we go, just a really clear example of how they've actually modelled very similarly the grandstands themselves, but have done a very different job of populating them through the Schumacher S's here. It's the usual story on the grandstands. I want to just take a look at this footage a little bit closer because you actually get a back view of some of those grandstands, which is great to see track detailing and draw distance as well. So keep an eye on the right hand side as we go under the gantry which is branded uh, in the Forza Motorsport footage and you can see on the right hand side here that is the back view of the grandstand so like I said that pit building there on the right seems to be very detailed in both Forza has some trucks and maybe sort of a paddock feel very difficult to even appreciate that but as we're going to see Forza you know does some things which makes the racing feel more alive I feel like and uh, most people might not notice it but we're definitely going to notice it here once look at the um, tree line ahead a very different tree line the field of views are very slightly different in both games I tried to make them as similar as possible but there will be slight differences but if we look at the tree line it does actually feel more densely populated I feel in Gran Turismo 7 which is interesting Forza feels a bit more sparse but that could be due to actual tree culling in the area I know Monza is very weird at the moment with trees compared to what we see in motor um, sim racing video games that have been scanned in the past. So coming up here to the chicane, again, we get a look around the back of some of the uh, pit objects. So I'm going to slow it down here. And I wanted to uh, show you the glare as well. Just take an opportunity to look at the glare on the top of the cars. They're very different in both games. We're going to come back to that. 
This is an area of the Nurburgring and GP circuit that feels very barren. <laughs> if this was an area in like Warzone or something, you'd know there's no enemies here. It's just a really barren area and I don't, I haven't been this side of the circuit so I don't know if this is what it actually feels like. When we get to the Nautilus Life, I have driven it so I can really tell you what the Nautilus Life like. Have a look at the glare as well. Very different um, sort of approach to the glare. We get some lens fair on the left hand side. That's like almost crashed the car in Forza and now we start on the actual Nautilus Life. So I'm going to guide you through. But firstly, a great example here of again, completely sparse grandstands in Gran Turismo 7. Look at the um, temporary buildings on the left-hand side. They need to be very similar details. We're going to Hatson Bart Bogan. It's really the first corner of the Nordschleife. And again, look at these tents and look at the flags there in Forza. It gives you that feeling. And I've never been to the Nürburgring 24 hours, but that is a vibe that I'd want to experience. Sort of that, you know, crazy festival vibe. Look in the background of Forza here. This is big. Look in the background of Forza where you got the blue in Gran Turismo. That is quite a big subtle difference that again, I just feel like elevates your senses as you are driving. I'm not making this up. This video is not sponsored by anyone. I paid for Gran Turismo and Forza, but for me, I'm just getting a little bit more, well, not a little, I'm getting quite a lot more of a vibe in a Forza Motorsport, I have to say. And that's gonna continue as we go down here. Some aspects where Gran Turismo does do better. The graffiti, is sparser in G7 that might be down to when Forza scanned it. Remember, they haven't launched this track uh, with the game at launch. It's come as a free DLC. Again, on the right hand side, some more prettier foliage, I would say, in Forza for you. Um, can anyone let me know what flower that is in the comments? Got any flower fans in the look, look at the smoke here. See that smoke? And also, there's lighting as well. There's sort of screens going on. You saw a Nurburgring screen and just completely different in Gran Turismo, you can see. By the way, keep looking at the fence as well. There's more fence on the left-hand side here in Forza. And I don't think those fences would have been added later. When I've been to the Nord Live, there's fencing like that pretty much all the way around. So the fact it's not in Gran Turismo here is a little bit weird. I don't think that fencing is removable. So that's maybe a stylistic choice that GT7 have taken. As we go down here, you see there's some more spoken. It is definitely something you notice when you're driving. And something else very interesting in the footage here, and this might be the first time you've ever really appreciated. I mean, firstly, look at the shadows. So on fours, the left hand side, the shadows are very low, poly and jagged. And Gran Turismo on the right, they're very smooth. There is some interpolation going on when I'm playing at slow motion because the video editing software is doing that. But you can check that when you're looking at full speed. But what I want to show you is the ray tracing on the left hand side. Look at the ray tracing in the reflection of the GTR, where the number plate would be. That is the benefit of ray tracing. So if you've never really understood ray tracing or seen ray tracing before, I am running this on a RTX 4090 with everything set up to the absolute max, burn the sky down, and you can really appreciate the ray tracing at times like that. Now, again, on the right hand side, it's just so barren on the right that I think it really contributes to a feeling of I'm on this track alone. No one is watching me. And in Forza, I feel very embarrassed because I just crashed there. So I have to skip ahead to when I get um, some speed. There we go. But I do feel like it gives to an air of that. And Gran Turismo is inherently a time trialing game, in my opinion. It's a real time trialer, whereas Forza is more about making you feel like you're some sort of hero, that you're, you know, the, the protagonist of the story. And I feel like this all contributes to it where people from uh, both developers have decided to um, sort of focus their time. And I know both developers, I know Polyphony, and Turn 10 are going to be watching this video very closely. So hello to both of you. Thank you so much for making some great games. I really enjoy. Just wanted to show you here the curbing. So you can see the definition on the curbs is a bit different. Um, whether it's accurate or not, I don't really know. I can't remember there. That's a place that when you drive the Nordschleife, Life, they always tell you that people crash. By the way, that corner, that is apparently the worst corner to crash at. Luckily, I survived. Now we're going to come in here and I got a bit disorientated in Forza because it feels so different to Gran Turismo. The shadows, the track detailing, I actually braked a little bit earlier in Forza because I thought I was coming up to the corner a little bit uh, before I actually was, and now we're gonna crash, there we go. So it can make a big difference. We are gonna see this track come to Assetto Corsa Capezioni as well, and iRacing are doing a big overhaul of everything their side, including 3D curbs. So I'm gonna continue to analyze this. I, I absolutely love doing this. Incredible. Now I want you to take a look at the vista here. So have a look at the hills in the background because that should all be topologically accurate. 
geography fan come at me so let me know what you think about that different ways of sort of simulating distance and uh, i'm not sure which one i prefer there's stuff in the gran turismo 7 one that feels like it's more distant and you do have tracks like dragon trail seaside where you look up at the mountains and it feels like a long railway especially in vr forza though just seems to have a better level of detail all the way back and again some massive smoke there a lot of bratwurst being eaten look at the neon sign on the right with the Nordsch life logo as we come in here and uh, it feels very different in both games doesn't it gran turismo 7 it feels like you're the first car on track in the early morning people are just arriving for the main event later whereas forza it feels like you know, forza it doesn't quite feel like you're the main event i have to say it feels like you're, you're getting closer to the main event um, but at least it's not popping off loads of flares and all that stuff and confetti. I really don't like that in the Forza games and the Horizon games and whatnot. But a uh, slightly different feel as we go down here. Another example of the glare. A bit more cinematic on the left-hand side as we see the flames come out. And this look, I mean, both games here look quite similar. We've got some blowing from the interpolation because it's struggling with the um, sun going through the trees. But I have to say here... If you've got one of these, if you're watching and you've want, got one of these games, let me know in the comments which one of these games you have, Forza or Gran Turismo. But I can say you won't be disappointed that you're really missing out. Looking here, there is a little sign on the right-hand side here for the corner that I think is a corner everyone should be worried about crashing because in Gran Turismo it looks very samey. In Forza it actually looks a little bit more distinctive from the other corners around it. Now look at the trees here. Tree fans, foliage fans, it's your time different ways that the trees feel different sort of color palette as well a bit more neutral in Gran Turismo maybe a bit more bluish in Forza it's definitely a bit uh, more yellowish um, no shadows at this point in the Gran Turismo footage the sun is slightly lower in the Gran Turismo footage as I get a snap of oversteer in Forza by the way I was playing on a gamepad in Forza and it was so much more comfortable than playing on my Moza wheel so I really do think it is a game designed for gamepads having a look here again at the trees different ways of doing it now if you forgot which game was which would you be able to identify it now would you know which one's falls and which one's gran turismo or would it be a little bit of a struggle because you know two completely different teams two completely different ips both built from the ground up in their own way separately now we're about to come to the iconic carousel and i'm sure you're very excited to see what's going to go on there as we go in you can conf a confirmation that the sun is a little bit slower in the sky on Gran Turismo. And this is the run up to the carousel. There's more graffiti now. So is it a case where, and again, look at this. It feels like people are watching you go up carousel. There are no stewards in Forza. We've got the stewards in Gran Turismo. And this looks, I mean, this looks very similar. So they've really scanned this. Although well, the gra graffiti is a, a different a lot of the time. Have a look here. You can see driving on pretty much same piece of tarmac and different graffiti so whether it's been washed off and Forza have scanned some new graffiti that's what I suspect but they both obviously put the graffiti there it's very important that you feel that when you're going around here and in the carousel I do have a picture of me in the carousel I'll try and find it and put it on screen now if I've got it and by the way the story with the carousel is that there was a driver in 1931 he won a race by like over a minute because he just did like a gutter run around the carousel so the next year they put in all this banking to make it fair for everyone it is probably arguably the most famous corner in uh, in motorsport in the world there so that's why the scanning seems to be of of very high detail in both games now we go into this is my favorite section in the Nordic life it feels just like a roller coaster and I would say arguably denser in Gran Turismo 7. I feel like I'm more in the forest in GT7. Although there's some detail here, you can see that that sort of hut is a bit different, but I prefer the plants here in GT7, actually. Uh, most of this footage so far, I would say that Forza is just generally more detailed. And arguably there is still more detail here, but I feel like Gran Turismo is, having driven this in real life, Gran Turismo arguably capturing that part a little bit more accurately. I've actually been on the track here. I should, probably shouldn't say that because it's illegal. But I've stood on the track here. And go on the right-hand side over the curb. You can see... In fact, you could see there on the left-hand side through the trees in Gran Turismo. Which is an important distinction. Coming down here will be interesting 
to look at the difference in the car park area. Uh, YouTube corner, if I remember correctly. You see Gran Turismo does have some uh, track side objects there, but Forza just has a little bit more. This is where people park their cars and have a look at some other cars crashing. And I would say here, this, this might be controversial, but Gran Turismo 7, again, is more accurate the feeling of what it's like here. This is, if you were doing a, a track day and it's not a big event, that is actually what you would see. You kind of see a few cars parked up like that. You wouldn't see a festival. Oh, I've crashed in the meantime. They've they've all got their footage there for their YouTube channels. Make sure you're subscribed to this one, by the way. If you've forgotten, make sure you're subscribed. But yeah, just want to make that point. So I'm, tr I'm trying to understand the vibe of both games, trying to get under the skin here. It'd be great to have a chat with the developers to just really sort of get out what vision they had as we come here. Incredible section, a little bit of a jump coming up. See, both uh, games doing a very good job here, in my opinion, of this part of the circuit. And I just wonder if Forza feels a little bit open. That might be more realistic. I haven't been in the last few years. But I feel in Gran Turismo more closed in. Uh, it feels like the, the trees are pushing me in a little bit more onto the circuit. It feels a bit more claustrophobic. It feels like the barriers are, are very close. Whereas Forza, there might be a slight field of view thing going on here. But it feels like I can feel a little bit more space. I feel a little bit more relaxed. And I did feel very relaxed actually doing the lap it, you're watching right now in Forza considering I haven't really driven with the gamepad much in Forza Motorsport uh, yet this year. Coming through here, again, the usual story of the trackside objects on the left-hand side and some signage as well. What's the gravel like on the right-hand side? A bit different, just catching up. Now going into the mini carousel. And then we're going to go on the dot and churn. We'll almost look at draw distance and see what the draw distance is like in both simulation, simulation simcades, I'm not sure. So here we go, onto the Dotton Chair. Great feeling if you've just smashed a lap on the Nordsch Life. I do have a guide on Gran Turismo, how you get. Is it 20 million credits you get if you follow my guide? Get all the cars, can't quite remember. So going down now, smashing the Dotton Chair, what makes you feel quicker? You can see the car sort of bouncing around in both games. Gran Turismo static camera getting a lot of hate. But here I'm seeing some nice car movement. And again, an example of the poor shadows in uh, Forza Motorsport here on the left hand side as it's done a sort of camera effect where it's pushed the car out. I'm going to go past the pits here and the restaurant on the right side that you can actually drive in Gran Turismo 7. There's a glitch how to get there if you haven't seen it. And uh, that's where the toll road comes out. So if you're doing your tourist laps, that's where you come out on the right hand side. Have some cones there. Definitely something that I would recommend doing if you're in the area and you're insured and everything because all it's going to take is a few crashes and they'll stop doing that, I reckon. That's my hunch. Absolutely smashing down here into the tier garden. If I've got that right. And now we're going to reveal the objects in the GP circuit. Very similar here, you can see. Pit entry blocked off because we're going GP. And then that is quite a detailed view. I mean, what an incredible circuit in both games, I have to say. And I'm going to give you some thoughts now as we have a look at this footage here. I think Forza has edged it on the density of track objects and details. But looking at that video as a whole, let me know what you think. I feel like it is a little bit repetitive. It's not super authentic to have that much. I don't know. I don't really know what I think and I should tell you. But Gran Turismo 7, it sort of focuses you into that time trial mentality. Whereas Forza, it feels a bit more populated. But they're definitely both two great representations. Let me know what you think. Here's another video on me driving the Nordschleife for another comparison, and I will see you next time.